Hello everybody um, and welcome to the webinar today which will be featuring Michael and Dossie and I will be welcoming everybody here. Um, it's so wonderful to be able to share a little bit more about a very exciting opportunity which is one of our awards. Um, my name is Beth Eden, I'm currently located in Sheffield, United Kingdom and I'll be hosting this webinar which will tell you a little bit more about the award category about sustainability photography. Um, we do have an incredible guest speaker who is also one of our youth judges for the Impact Awards, Michael. Thank you so much for coming along, Michael, and sharing your story with us. Um, it is so incredible to have you here. Michael has worked for around six years in this space and worked with big names such as Hawaii, uh, Might, uh, Afrosos, Africa Amiga, um, founded and run many different projects all around environmental conservation and beyond. And Michael really is a driving force for young people to uh, use the skill of storytelling and elevating new voices across different communities. So it's absolute honor to have you here today, Michael. Thank you so much. Um, I will pass it over to you to tell a little bit more about yourself and your story. And then we will go into um, the examples with some tips and tricks and follow up with a lot more information about the award. But first and foremost, welcome, Michael. It is awesome to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for introducing me, Bethy. And now it's uh, great and it's my pleasure to be here today. Well, uh, so my name is Mike Anders, uh, and I'm from uh, East Africa, Tanzania. Uh, for for those who know Tanzania, I think they know what I'm saying. Uh, so Tanzania, and I, I grew up in a city called Arusha. It's uh, one of the biggest cities in the north of Tanzania. So it's like a very popular, I think for all people that are visiting Tanzania, they, they know Arusha because that's like, where you land and then start exploring the country. So that's where I grew up. Uh, a little bit away from the city in the village, but yeah. And um, well, I'm I'm so happy today to uh, to be here and be able to kind of share a little bit of my story and actually to kind of motivate motivate a more storyteller, photographer, and I mean all the people that are watching this and uh and actually maybe teach some people right inspire some people in, in you know, any kind of way so so happy for this opportunity thank you so much michael i just want to welcome a few more people that have come to join us um do share where you're calling in from today michael would love to see um where you're all calling in from and what your background is um, so, Michael, I'll over to you to tell a little bit more about how your story began, which I found an incredible part of um, what you were telling me earlier and really helped me to give more context, more about you and what you're interested in. Yeah. Well, so well, I like to say everything had a, had a beginning and at my calls, it's a beginning. So the, the two pictures that you're seeing now on the screen, uh, the left one is my, are uh, is for my grandfather. Uh, this is a team of he, he was a guitar player, uh, an artist, and uh, I never, I was never lucky to see him alive. So he was died, he died, uh, he died like two years before I was born, and this is like the only picture that uh, they have from him. Uh, I mean, I don't know who took the picture, but that's the only picture that he got when he was working. Uh, it's, the guy, it's, it's, a, it's a guy on the left who is holding guitar with the white shirt. That's my, that's my guy. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then we have another one on the left. That is me and my young brother who also passed away. Uh, all right. 13 years ago, it was just five years. And this is like the only picture that we have together. Um, like, so this is like all the memories that we have together. I mean, we have we have shared a lot of things, but this is like that one thing that you just look and kind of remember the day. You know? I mean, it's so easy if you see a picture, it's kind of connected with the, you know, with that time and, and day. So. I would say this is where my kind of photography story begins. So when I grew up and like 
take a look of this picture and I, I was just grown up with the passion of always wishing I have more from them like having maybe seen my grandma my grandpa uh, my grandfather performing I mean because he had a really great story in in the time when he was playing guitar it was so hard for an African actually to have like access to just a guitar itself and then also to lean a guitar was just so hard but he, he may need someone to do it so I don't know the story but uh, I mean what I hear it was it was not easy for him to became a guitar player in the country and it was actually very famous. They were playing all over Tanzania. You know, they have concept all over the, the country. And so this, I, I've always wished to see, uh, like, how was it playing? How was it sound? I don't even know how it sound. I don't know his, his friends. I don't know. I don't I, like this is all like, I mean, I know he was a musician and this is what I can see from it. So I always wish to have more from him. Also from my young brother, I mean, also, this is also like very, yeah, this is like big to me. So I, I always wish that I have more for him. So then uh, I started, uh, I started, I started really like to see people taking pictures and, uh, and like, I was just enjoying to see other pictures, people taking pictures. I was very happy also to see different films and mostly emotion. I always like to play with emotion. So like emotional films, like they when they get you like, wow, or cry. I mean, in that time we don't speak English, but we were, we had the opportunity to watch some English movies. You don't understand anything, but from the picture, you know, you just get the feeling like what they're trying to, to show, what they're trying to, you know, communicate. So that's how we started. Then I had to just like to see people taking pictures and also taking pictures of others and also directing. This is where I really are like discovering my passion of photography of, of directing pictures. So I didn't have fun, but my friends did. And every time I met them, we were like, hey, let's just try some pictures and stuff. And I was always this guy like directing. I think if you stay right there, and like with this light and this anger, that would be so good. And every time I direct, we have like really good pictures, uh, but I never had that credit of like, you took the picture, you just directed it. The guy with the phone is the guy who did the picture, but that was not a problem for me. I think I was just happy to see these people be like, man, that's a really nice picture. So that was like, yeah, I think I should do it more. So when people are becoming really happy for like the creativity, because I I always know that like if you direct a picture, I mean for all the photographer is to direct that picture. I mean you don't tell anybody that you're directing, you're just taking it, but you already be like this and this and this light. So it's, it's it's part of directing. So I was like, that was my. I mean I didn't take that picture, but that that was me right there. I mean the picture I did that. So it grew like that. Then I started like um, also practicing with their phone, uh, uh, um, taking pictures. And I was so in love taking pictures of kids because like in Africa, it's so easy. If you just show up with your phone, all the kids are running to you and they are easy to tell them to do like anything and they will do it. So tell them jump, they will just jump and like to see how the picture look when they jump. So I was like, yeah, this is, this. I think I like this more. So the kids were not a problem. Every time I call them somewhere, I'll tell tomorrow we're gonna be this first. Let's just create. They will, they will show up on time. They will they will actually look for me. So I was like, man, and how happy they were when I was like showing their pictures. That really get into me and be like, ah, oh, I think this this is all I need. But then I didn't know that I would end up a photographer. But I was like, I think I really love this. And later on, I got engaged with our own organization because I was taking pictures of the kids. And I mean, back in the days, you see African kids like randomly closes, maybe sometimes not. And I I I started showing them pictures like in Facebook. Uh, so so I opened like an account on Facebook and Instagram, like just a normal account and just posting. And I don't know, some people saw that picture and one day, one person like uh, contact me say, I want to help. Uh, I mean, these kids and, and all this you're showing, I just, I, I, I feel like I want to help with anything. So I'm like, yes, I'll be, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, like we can figure out something together. So um, 
she become like a friend to me and I, I get more inspired like taking pictures and show to her and she's like please let's just give them like books so I remember back we, we started with like a sport material and like exercise books small small things and I was like yo so I can also help with this like you know what I'm doing uh, I can also link it and people can actually see it and start helping so that's how we get like I started to not just kids uh, uh some community like uh uh, I started working with community too, like old people, young people, and also teenagers, and like I sure taking pictures of what they're doing, trying to uh, write about it, and if they can ever get help. And then later on, so yeah. I'm I'm in a project. Uh, I should have said that in my introduction, but it's not too late. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm involved in one really good organization called Africa Meager. Uh, it, it's that's like a sped one means African friends. Uh, and I've been working with them for like six years and I'm doing like videos and pictures for them. So that, so it only started with just me taking pictures of kids. And after other organizations showed that the work that Africa Amiga was doing, they're like, who's your photographer? This is a really nice picture. So they start like, Michael can do it, you know? <laughs> Then I started getting involved with like so many organizations, like, hey, your work is so nice. Then I jumped to like film. So I was just started with photography. It was a fun. I mean, I I I've edited some videos with my phone, but like those are uh, small, small video, very simple. But then I was like, oh, other organization got requests for pictures and videos. So I had to lean both way. And then I figured I figured that I'm also really good in videos, like the way that I'm the, the way I'm like um telling the stories through the, the videos, it was really great. So I'm like, I think I can do you know both. <laughs> so I started work as a photographer, filmmaker, and then but that's how that's how the story began. And yeah, it, it, it have been seven years, six, seven years now. And I'm 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 still doing it, and I mean you can see my work, and I'm really it's it's really improvement. I don't know I'm still in every day like most of us, but yeah it's a big improvement, and I've been able to help so many people, so many schools with uh with my talent, uh also kind of help people. Not I mean it's all. A, also, also environment like helping in a specific environment with like a problem like like this picture. It was a rain caused this, and it was so dangerous because uh, there is a road crossing here, and then the kids could not even go to school because they could not pass here or they had to go around the thing. But now, oh, I wish I had. But now they put like a small breed, and and now the student can just can just pass easily and go. So yeah, I, I've done a lot. I've done a lot. I cannot just explain them all, but so much. And uh kind of very happy for the level that I am now to kind of inspire more people and kind of teach uh other people like how to do this, uh, what I'm doing and actually help. Yeah. Can you explain what's happening in this picture? Is this on a recent project that you did? So this was my recent project. Uh, we were we were filming for a, a TV show that I called Lion TV. It's from UK. They're actually doing so many shows and sell them to like big big platform like Netflix and like those big big you know big big media. So this is just uh, two weeks ago, we were in Serengeti National Park. I don't know if you, any of you know Serengeti National Park, but it's like very famous. If you watch Lion the King, I think the Lion King, you know Serengeti National Park. <laughs> so we were making a film, a, a TV show about uh, a balloon crossing over Serengeti. This have never been done before. So like to fly from east to west, and it, it took us seven days. And this was the last day we end up landing outside the park. So we went like in the village somewhere. And it was real. Uh, it, I mean, now in Tanzania, it's rain season. So our car got stuck and and people get in the village help us. So this is what happened to the village. These are the people that were helping us pushing the car. Like, oh, you see with the mud in their face. And yeah, so, but that was like the last picture we took in the project. Like, 
it was it was yeah it was so emotional i could not take much here because everything had to go to the tv you know uh so this is just one snap that i just asked somebody to do yeah. sorry we're and, gonna take you minutes. Uh, Go on. <laughs> yeah and one thing i also uh so i all the like all the artists, all the storytellers, I mean, photographers, they always have their way to like sh tell their stories. And um, like if you're an artist, all the ways are accepted. Like, but there are basics that they have to apply in the pictures, like you know the lines and and so many things. Uh, but my kind of, uh, I would say the what I love for me in my storytelling because I must help people. So it's like to connect what I'm trying to help and people. So that's why you see most of my pictures where you have people inside is uh, just to give you that connection of like humanity and also the the, the thing that's happening. So that's just my, my way, like that's, that's the way I really love it. So yeah. Maybe we can go touch a little bit of a, if you if no question yet, we can touch the. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Michael from any of these photos that you may have seen? Maybe one captured your attention and you might like to, to explain it. Um, I do have one question up my sleeve that I would really like to know about. But if anyone mm -hmm. has any questions, please just put them in the chat and we can get those sent over to Michael so he can explain maybe something about the pictures um someone said here that it was really good to see because they do communications for that organization which is awesome to see and like how you've portrayed these images and um, mm. we have people calling in from nigeria ghana india today um so one of our questions is how do you decide the theme of the picture um color cor correction wise uh, color correction wise no, no. And maybe for people who don't know, what does that mean, color correction? <laughs> what did you say? Okay, so well, um, uh, I'll say, um, yeah, I got a good eye on colors, and most of my pictures, I always like to bring the colors that make you feel like you you're right in that place. I don't want to make you like a super clean or like a super bad i mean super dirty but like the minimum uh picture or color is that you like feel your connect with with these people like this this is this is the same color you'll see when you're in this environment uh it's it's, it's, it's like no green or whatever i mean everything is as it looks even though i mean if you're a photographer you take the picture roll with no with no colors but yes, when it comes to color, I like have the color in my mind on how that day was, on how the environment looks. And I just try to like apply that on my all on my picture. Like on my picture, I don't have one color style, but I have a style that every every color represents an environment and also yeah, like the reality there. That was brilliant. Yeah, the realisticness of the photos. Thank you so much for answering that. Um, if anyone else has a question, please put it in the chat box. One of my questions as well um, here, Michael, is out of all of these photographs, um, maybe you remember all of them because <laughs> they're all yours. Is there any one that particularly has allowed, like, um, followed to a specific change or impact in the community from delivering that photograph? Is there some type of conversation you've had or some type of impact that's resulted from that photograph that you might like to share the story about? Okay. Uh, I don't know if can I control this picture by Grant, but I would like to share. I think it's under my control, unfortunately. <laughs> One second, I'll go back. <laughs> Which photo was it? Uh, uh, I mean, all, all of this picture, they got some story, but there's one picture I'm really proud about. Uh, I think it's like under, ah, this one. A student. No, not this. No, no, no. No, no. Let me go out. Is it one of these? Yeah, this one. Number? Number 19. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, I wish I'd have, I, I wish I'd have, I should have put more pictures in this. So, <laughs> so this is uh this is our one of the pictures I'm really proud about because I started work with this student. Uh, I wish I could have shown. That. I started working with this student I uh, three years ago, and when I first get to this to school, it was like we. In the, pro, in, the, in, the, in the organization I'm working on, we thought we could, we have people that can help, but we just have to find, like to get these people help, like to get a, uh, a reason to make this people like, wow, this, this, these people deserve help. So I went to the school and uh, they had like a broken, uh, broken classes, like all of the education system was very bad. They didn't have enough desks, they were sitting on the ground. That's what I'm saying. I wish I had those pictures to show. They were sitting on the ground and the office was also really bad. Like the teachers were like in a really bad office that you cannot even walk comfortable and prepare what you're going to teach to this student. So it was really in a really bad circumstance. So I just, I went there and it's hard here if you just go to a school and say, I want to take pictures and maybe they might get help or maybe some people might just see it and help. But I went there with a really confidence. I'm like, uh, I've been working with an organization and we're helping education. So I'm gonna take some pictures here. I was very honest with, with the school. This is one thing you have to be also as a storyteller and a photographer that I'm gonna take these pictures and try to like also interview all of the students, like write down and try to get the student get help. Uh, uh, through like I'm, I'm also really good on social media through my friends and the friends of my friends and the organization that I've been working on so I took like a really good pictures uh, and that really shows what is happening in our school they were the best picture I ever taken I swear so I, I brought them back and write really good and publish them in, in social media like Facebook, Instagram and also my friend some of my friends posted on Twitter because they are really nice. I, this is one thing about about like nowadays. If you have like a really good picture, people might just share it, not not for like really caring that these people get help, but it's just cute and nice, and I just want to share. But one of those people that are looking at picture, everybody look at picture differently. Some people are not just cute; they're like very curious of what of what what is happening in the picture. Like, I don't know, uh, this picture has been here for a while, but I don't know if anybody like looked the pictures and like trying to figure out what is happening. So this is what happened. I post this picture, some people are just very, uh, like very into like what was happening. These people are there really by circumstance and this student, like they deserve something better. So we started helping. And we brought, uh, so we fixed the office first because we were like the teachers, they're the, like the heart of the school. So these are the ones that are passing the, the, the education to like the kids, the knowledge. So they, they have to be fit. So we start with the office, then to the classes. So as we speak now, like the school got a new classes, like three classes and a new office, like a very nice office. And also they got like so many desks. So now like all the students can sit on their own desk and like a very big comfortable in studying. And so this picture is interesting because so they have a water problem in the school. And what is happening in the picture is the kids are like fighting to wash their dishes after, after eating because they have only one access to the water, which is not even much. Uh, but this is this is what is happening. So they're like fighting to wash the dishes and, and stuff like that. So as we speak now, we already got the uh, the fund, and I think uh, this December we're gonna like put the well to the school, and like uh, so this this the, all the students. I think there are five hundred uh five hundred and fifty six students, and they're gonna all have access to water. So this is one of the projects that I'm really proud about because I it was I was not employed or anything. I went there with my own passion and be like, man, let me just try it. And as more as you do, this is the thing about about this work. When you do it and see that people are getting helping from what you do, you're getting addicted to it. You just want to do it, help more, help more, help more, and that's it. So I'm I'm really proud of this, and I would. 
whatever that we're gonna connect after this, I think I will show uh, I will show more of the school and the video that I've made. And I think oh, oh, oh they also got a toilet. It was so bad thing to them. They didn't have a toilet. Imagine it. But it was like a really bad situation. And now they got this really nice toilet. Like you can go in the toilet and spend like a few hours. So clean, so nice, so fresh. So I'm really, really proud of this. Yeah, very proud. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that, Michael. I I literally have goosebumps in my seat. And I, I think the chat uh, mentioned quite a few. There were a lot of people here quite inspired by what you just shared. How really yeah. taking a photograph can open a door for change. So um, I think the the team here and the, some of the young people here with us would really appreciate you maybe be able to unpack some tips and tricks for them now I know you've been you're an absolute testament to this space and a case study for creating change through through photographs um and beyond so what are your tips and tricks for young people who are looking to maybe use photographs to make change and potentially maybe even win this award um with with QS impact okay uh well yeah I have a few trips and a few tips and tricks and before I get to them uh, I mean now nowadays you get all the photographer and I mean most of the photographer they be like just go and just take pictures just just go and take pictures and then but honestly I just wish I knew these things before like I just say okay I'm gonna just take a lot of pictures because you might take a thousand pictures that doesn't have any story in it and just somebody come with one picture and like be able to like help and make a change so it's, it's never about the, uh, like how many pictures you're taking. It's just about taking it right and kind of try to fit the story of what you're trying to tell through that picture. And, and that's hard. But I think after you know these things, maybe it's easier because then you have your, you have eyes open when you're taking the pictures. Most of the time I'm, I'm taking a picture and everybody's saying, no, that's so nice. I mean, you should take it like this, but I'm like thinking and like take my time and say, okay, now I'll take it. But yes, this would be perfect. So uh, I'm never, I'm never a lot of the photographer that they they go. I mean, this is not a photo shoot. You're not going to take thousand pictures. And it's just more uh, and kind of like say, oh, here the girl look right. I mean, I should edit this one. This is like you're trying to communicate through the picture, and that's what makes a. Uh, uh, being a, like this kind of photographer not so easy as like a other photographer so for now that I'm I am I'm educated enough on, on storytelling this is some of the things that I really like to think about before I like now that I've been using them for a while I don't even have to think about it you just see it and you're like yeah yeah but uh, there are things that you should really think uh, on your uh, taking picture or whatever so the first one is the understanding the course. So you don't just take your cameras out or your cell phone out and just like start taking pictures because it's not, you're not really, I mean, for the change, you need to understand the course. So, oh, now these people are suffering because of water. So, oh, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm like, the cause here is water and this is where I'm focused on. And then, Actually, number three should be number two. So after you understand the course, you can also focus on the solution. Like, uh, I think that's also give you more open eye on what you want to show the pictures. Like, you got to think about the solution also. Uh, and then you call, you're you going to do like a story time to the image. So this is like, our, to make your image right. I don't know, we... All of us are using different cameras, different cell phone, but there's some kind of basic things that appear in every picture when you're taking it because we need to see the picture. So we need light, uh, we need to have to be in the afternoon or or whatever. So like we have to, the picture have to be seen, it doesn't have to be that. We need to see those people, we need to see those factor. And yeah. Uh, I also like to build relationship with if it's people that I'm working with or any or any place, there there must be people. Otherwise, if you're working in wildlife, 
I mean, you also kind of build relationship with what you're doing because it's like to know how to approach those things. It's also building relationship because if you are doing what life and you just get uh, running, all the animals just disappear. So that knowing those people, that's building relationships. So you're trying to know the kids, you know, to you know, uh, you're trying to know the the, the person you work with, uh, kind of get their story. And 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 I think this is also one thing that's very important. Uh, you have to be a sharing person because people are more open uh, when they when you're sharing. If you're just asking, uh, people are like. Ah, this is this guy is just here to like just take my story and go but if you are sharing it feel more like oh he's just trying to connect and like trying to know me really uh we're trying to get know each other here so there is a different way to build relationship with the people and the environment that you are working on uh and you have to be a little bit yeah you have like to know really how to get that connect but that's what I do. I like to share and I like to, um, okay, so I like to number five, research and pre-planning. <laughs> also, when I'm going to work somewhere, I always like like to research, like what happened in that place. Uh, you can go in Google now, that's, like, you just have access to everything. You can go in the Google map and kind of see the place. So, you know, because I'm like, oh, I can, uh, maybe here a drone shot would be also be nice. You already see that on the map. Or there is a hill on this side, the sunset is on this side. This is something I really like to sing when I go to shoot. So, I mean, sunset, sun, uh, sunset, sunrise, mountains, the landscape itself. Uh, also, kind of the environment that you are working on, because when you get to a big level, you have to go for a few days photography. You need to park some, some things. And so researching is really good and like pre-planning everything, pre-planning uh, the pictures, pre-planning, everything. I mean, you can also plan all the pictures in the office. You just go and take them. This is this is uh, because this is not, I don't know how to say, but yes, you can have all the image in your mind and be like, when I get there, this is what I'm chasing. And things might happen in the field, but it's good to have a plan on what you have to need to bring with you back all want to bring to your client or whatever. Uh, light and detail, I always talk about that a little, I think. So uh, I know that I'm going to this place. Um, it's going to be in the afternoon. Maybe I need uh, um, something to block the light or da, 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 da. I mean, this is already when you're high, but I think for us beginners, it just have to be, I like to take pictures uh, when the light is not too strong, too sharp because you get the detail. So I think if you're a beginner, you, you should really notice uh, that uh, light light is one of the really big things when you're doing uh, photography storytelling. Uh, you need to know I'm gonna be in this time and the light is gonna be this. And yes, you're taking picture in a strong sun, they were not looking so good. Some person take that same picture in the evening, be like, what's wrong with my picture? But it's just the light. That you cannot get a lot of details in it. So, and yeah, for also for a photographer storyteller, I think before and after is really good, which I'm already psyched because I should have shown it like the school. I have really before and after that could really inspire you guys. But as we connect, I think I'm gonna be able to like share more. And you know, so also I'm always happy to help. Uh, emotion. Uh, it's one of my number one thing, but it's on number eight. <laughs> so I like to have emotion in the pictures. Like you have seen the, the, the all my picture with people. So I like to have this human connection with what you're trying to help always. And I think this is just my kind of way of working that makes me feel happy because most of the things I'm doing is just to yeah, to make improvement of the people, sometimes environment, but yes, it's environment because people have to be safe in it. So it, it's coming back. It's maybe okay for for one more, but also people is one of the thing that we're really trying to make uh, the world a better place, so we can like live in here and having a good time. <laughs> so I like to play emotion to have people 
maybe they're either they're smiling or they're sad or, or whatever. Um, so we'll have that on the picture too. Yeah. That is an awesome yeah. list. Oh, sorry, keep going. I have a few questions here, but whenever you're ready. Yeah, so yeah, that's, uh, there's more. But yes, one thing that we get you to all uh, the, the, the tips and tricks that you can learn is after you are passionate about it, it's always trying also to practice and to try to learn more about this thing. That's the... I would say it's so easy to stay, and it's also it's also not so easy. Also, I mean it's really good, but it's not good. So as now we have so many YouTubers teach you all the thing about photography, all the things, and but I think one of the main big fat is just practicing because in my time I didn't have no YouTube or anything. Everything I did was just me going practice and leaning through the mistakes and, and try that again and try that again. To know the basic, to know everything, it's the easy job to practice, to have that in your head. But now I got the camera on my phone, I have to click this and that, and that's another, that's another thing. So practicing is, is the best. And that's actually when you also get your talent, like you are, you are part of creativity because if I learn, if you learn so much from other people, you get their you 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 mostly get their way of how they want their art to look like. But when you do it yourself, you kind of or uh, discover uh, the, a very different heart inside you, and that's what make your work different too. And like that's also what makes you different to have to have that style. Uh, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant tips and tricks. Thank you so much, Michael. We have actually a lot of questions in here. I think you've touched on a little bit of them before. Um, mm -hmm. But a one question that kind of will follow on from after taking the photo um, mm -hmm. from Saul Manor says, which ways can you use, like which ways do you use to create good editing on your photos? So is there like tools or some type of suggestions you have for people after you've taken that photo and you want to edit? Okay, so... Uh... Yeah, uh, editing. Yeah, edit, editing is somewhat something else. But I edit my pictures. Um, I edit them with Lightroom. Now, uh, I started using Lightroom like uh, three years ago. But before that, I was not editing with any. I was just taking pictures and just have them that way. But yes, Lightroom is a good way to edit. I don't know if you guys uh have access to Lightroom. I think the one from the phone is free and you can kind of create preset on your style and mood and things like that. so so Lightroom will be will be a good one for every photographer to like start learning how to use it if you are not know how to use it yet or if you know like just improving and start it like you know but Lightroom is a is a good app to edit. That's a good idea. Thank you. And it's good that it's free on your phone, which is fabulous to hear. Um, mm -hmm. Another question is, is there a certain type of day when it's the perfect light um, that sh maybe you would recommend a beginner to go out and take photos during that time of day? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So um, in the morning, it's really nice because... Because what we are trying to avoid more in 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 photography is light, like to have that perfect light. So you know, in the morning we don't have so much light, which can lead you to have a good setting in your camera and kind of get a good picture with good details. So in the morning or in the evening, it's it's I would say it's a good time for a photographer to go out and and and, and practice. Uh, because if you're a beginner and you don't have so much equipment, you just have your camera or your cell phone, then I'll do it in the morning and in the evening, most of the time. Uh, maybe in a rainy day, I can just do it anytime because in a rainy day, you have clouds, so it's not so much light on, on the earth. Uh, so I'll just do it in a, uh, also in a, in a daytime, but in a rain season. I find that really interesting because I think... Mm -hmm. um, 
being a beginner in photography you think to go out in the best sunlight because that would be the best but actually the cloudy conditions are the best to get yeah, the, the best quality photo right, right. which is uh, very interesting for me to hear and i'm sure for the rest of the, the community listening the other question that i saw here from franklin is some of the pictures are on black and white that you've taken <laughs> Yeah. Um, what gave you the idea to make it black and white and how did you take those types of photos? I'll go back. Uh, okay. So, uh, let you go back. Well, so, um, which one are you going to? This one? Okay. <laughs> so, like I, I would say, I like I just like to try new I just I just like to try uh new new things. I don't want to be like ah yes this and you can this is the problem for black and white or that that. But this is one thing I'm saying when I'm taking picture in a very low light or in a very strong light, I like to have them in the black and white because they give you a different feeling of of photographer that is it's not because if I didn't edit this picture on black and white i'm telling you guys they are not look this good <laughs> because i took them in the afternoon the sun was so strong and it was just not really good time to get that detailed picture so i'm like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna try them in the black and white and i think it works i think, I think i like them. uh and also when when I have picture with like two strong colors, then also I like to have a like like actually when I have like if you have a white house face with a black house face, black and white will looking really good on it. Um, yeah, but let's stick with the light thing. If it's the light is too strong or too too low, then try black and white. You'll love it. It's a good solution. Especially to the beginner. Thank you so much. Has anyone else got any more questions? Please put them um in the chat. Um, I'll just ask you one more, which we've kind of touched on, but just to reiterate the points. What should be considered in taking a quality picture? What what should we consider? Mm -hmm. I know you talked a lot about light, maybe devices and things too, mm -hmm. but is there any other tips and tricks you just want to reiterate as we're coming to the end of the session about how to take that perfect photo? Uh, so, as I imagine, uh, if we have uh, beginners here, most of like what they have is cell phone and maybe small cover. Um, uh, yeah, cell phones mostly actually, yeah. Um, with awesome. yeah with impact reports i think a lot of our community members take photos on their phones mm -hmm. and upload it as part of their impact report so with that so, in yeah. mind so yeah in cell phone there's not a lot there is not a lot of things to know it's really to have to know what's the best time to take the pictures which i say uh when the, the when you don't have so much light or, or so much shadow say so like the time that I mentioned, uh, morning and evening would be perfect to do cell phone photography. Uh, if we jump in the camera, then there is a lot of setting, but in the phone, there's not, there's not much to, to set. So in the phone, you just uh, do what the universe provides, which is just a lot. <laughs> okay, but, but, in the cool. but yeah, but in the camera, there are so many things. Uh, uh, and also depending on the camera, depending on the lens, depending on so many things. But yeah, that's they are basic with if there's anyone using camera, I could touch that. Uh but yes, maybe should, maybe I should touch the basic on the camera, like to get good. Um, good yeah, pictures. sure, sure. And and actually, can you also maybe highlight some resources? I know you talked about YouTube. Is there a certain YouTuber that you've seen that is really incredible? Or a certain blog or something that would be a perfect resource for beginners. Okay. Uh well, so I'll do that camera thing, then I'll jump to your question. So uh for the people that are lucky already to have their hands on camera, I don't know, with like any kind of camera, uh 
uh, in a camera, if you I don't if you are taking if you are using manual, like if your camera is on manual focus, which is where they say that like if you become a really good photographer, you should have started taking pictures manually because in when you when you're in a manual mood, you kind of control the design of the picture that you want or the style of the picture that you want. So this is like a kind of photographer already improved to the kind that he have his own style and how he like to tell his, his stories. But the basics are, we have ISO. Uh, ISO um, that control the detail of the picture, like how quality the picture is. So it's best to try to have the ISO as low as possible if you have a good light, like I'll say a um, hundred, uh like below 80 100 that would be good uh but most of the time if you're doing taking pictures in the afternoon i think you can go around four to 100 that would be perfect uh the the also we jump to the aperture so the aperture is like uh the the shadow field like how you when you picture, uh, the, uh, how do you want to control the details in the picture? So if you have like higher uh, frame uh, aperture, uh, the lens, like there are lenses start from 2.0, 2.2, if you understand what aperture means. Uh, but most of the, uh, the lenses that we mostly get like to use, maybe they start with 4.0 which is not bad. You can still get like a really good story with that. But if you're taking landscape pictures, then you always have to try to have your uh, aperture really high because so you like, the, you give, you allow the camera to get all the details in that landscape pictures. Uh, or if you're taking portrait, you can have the very low if or 4.0, or maybe if your lens go uh, lower than that, 1.8, 1.2, it depends on the on the object. Uh, if it's a person or if it's a project, that's how it works. Shutter speed, it always depends also on what kind of photography you're doing. If you are doing landscape using tripod, you can have really low uh, shutter speed. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're doing something that's moving a lot, maybe you can go a little bit higher. So. That's how it works for the camera. But for the phone, don't worry. You don't have to do any of that. Just take your phone and know what you're yeah. trying to shoot that day. Practice. Make sure that you're coming home with a like a, with a story in that picture. Like you can really tell. So these people are doing these things or these things. Da, da, da. And yeah, not just, oh, look how cool is it. Because storytelling is not, this is it's not the best pictures. No, it's just the stories inside. It can be a really shit picture, but it can be the best. So, uh, thank you yeah. so much, Mac. These are brilliant, brilliant takeaways. Um, I want to thank you on the whole, on behalf of the entire QS Impact Charity and community mm -hmm. for coming along and speaking to us. Um, if you missed it at the beginning, Michael is one of our judges for the sustainability photography category, um, and we have eight categories this year which are rewarding young people for their social impact, for the things that they're doing in community. So maybe you've created a photograph or noticed something in your community that you'd like to capture and create change around. Um, you can upload your impact report on qsimpact.org to be eligible if you go under the impact report section. And you must be um, between the ages of 18 to 35 and be registered on our account. Make sure you're verifying your account when you register as well. It's a really important thing, otherwise you can't upload an impact report. There'll be a, an email that's an email that's sent to your email address to verify and then upload your impact report before December 15th for this specific category, which is about sustainability photography. And I'm sure that Michael will be able to uh, have a look as one of our judges. I'm sure he'll be really excited to see what you can provide. Don't be scared. Um, this is all about providing change and showcasing what's happening in your community through your lens on your phone or your camera. Um, we're welcoming any level, all levels to showcase how you're noticing an issue in your community and creating change around that through photography. Um, so we welcome everybody to upload their impact report. And this year we're recognizing your social impact 
through providing you with a QS Impact Badge, a title and social media kit to help boost your resume and really help you to tell the world about the key skills and the impact you've made in your community to make you stand out from the crowd. Um, and as we are accredited to the United Nations Environment uh, Programme, we're offering opportunities to bring yourself to UNEP events uh, to showcase to the world what we're about and help to create change around many different environmental and other issues in your community. And with that, as you, all the winners will also be featured in the QS Insights magazine. Hopefully your photo will be there um, and something that you've maybe uploaded to be eligible for this award. Um, you can showcase it in an international magazine with QS, which is absolutely fabulous. Our theme for this year is all about regeneration. It's about creating localized ground up change for regeneration, for change and transformation from the community level, keeping in mind indigenous beliefs, localization, your local community and the environmental aspects that you're experiencing on the ground. So if you have something in your community that you'd like to upload as an impact report, please do that and share it with the world um, so other young people can get this opportunity to be recognized at this level and really um, boost their influence and tell the world what incredible work they're doing from the ground up. So you only have until December 15th, so not long yet, <laughs> two more weeks before um, the uh, entrance to this is closed. So you are all eligible, please upload your impact report. Um, I also put in here, so if you are passionate about using your lens to create a tool for change, taking a photo, um, you can be have your chance to win this Sustainability Photographer of the Year award. And the specific category for the Sustainability Photographer is found under the type of category in the impact report. It's on the second page of the impact report. And what you have to do is you have to upload the exact photo that you want to be recognized for this prize and tell the story about how that photo is going to make change or has created a different perspective um, in your community or in your life. And we really, really encourage you to tell that story, just as Michael has said today, about how that photo can change things. Like he explained in the school, he was able to get better facilities in the school after taking those photographs. Um, we'd love to hear your similar stories for this and recognize you in this way. So please do upload your impact report. There's a QR code here um, on the screen. And if you know of anyone incredible in your community that's been taking photographs and maybe helping you on your projects, get them to submit their, their photographs because we would absolutely love to recognize them. Um, so here's also another QR code to upload your impact report. Um, and we have just posted on our news channel about the eligibility requirement for the photography award, um, which again, you have to select the sustainability photographer of the year under the category in your impact report. Um, thank you so much, Michael, for sharing your story. I absolutely felt so inspired after today's session. It lifted my spirits. Um, and I'm sure many of the community members that are listening to this and will also listen to this on YouTube and uh, through our other resources. Um, thank you so much. Is there any last words you want to share as we wrap up? I'm, wow, I'm, I'm so happy to be able to share uh, these few things about, about photography, uh, storytelling, filmmaking, and kind of, uh, I'm, I'm just so happy to have because this is a, uh, uh, like this is one thing I wished I had when I was like uh, grown up in this industry, and I think uh, all all the people that are listening to this they're just so lucky to have somebody who can say a few things about like all of this, and yeah. So thanks for everybody that uh, were here to listen to this, and I hope I'm I'm helping all of you in one way or another in this. Uh, thank you so much Michael yeah. that is awesome and we're so excited to see Michael on January 18th which is our award ceremony too he'll be presenting the award with someone else called Mark Terry who's the United Nations documentary filmmaker um, who's worked in the Arctic and beyond and I'm sure Michael will very much like to get connected with him too um, yeah. so thank you everybody have a wonderful evening night whatever time of day it is for you all and we'll see you at our next webinar next week Thank you, everybody. Thank you to Thank Michael. You, Thank you, Michael. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.